for those of you that don't really know much about Kawada, he was, you know how um, uh, Tanahashi is called the ace of Japan and the ace of New Japan. Well, from 1996 to about 2005, the ace of all Japan pro wrestling was Toshiaki Kawada. And he was a big loyalist to all Japan. When people jumped ship and all like the big names like uh, Misawa and Kobashi and all that jumped to pro wrestling Noah and created that, Kawada stayed with all Japan. He was only one of two big names to stay with all Japan at the time. And he maintained a friendship with the guys from Noah for the most part. But at the same time, I think he was probably a little, a little angry about that. And that was kind of the start of the downfall. I'd say of all Japan to the point of where all Japan went down. Noah started going up a little bit until the untimely death of uh, Misawa and new Japan kind of took off and didn't look back. So <clears throat> that was that was a little bit of Kawada there. The match we're covering today, by the way, just to get into it, is from June 3rd, 1994. Uh, to start off 94, uh, Kawada won the 1994 Champion Carnival by defeating Steve Dr. Death Williams on April 16th. And then he followed by dropping a third straight Triple Crown Challenge against Mizawa. On June 3rd, it, this was called the singles match of the decade, by the way. By who? Uh, I'm not sure. I, I'm, I'm assuming uh, to, uh, like Japanese wrestling magazines and, of course, Wrestling Observer, which is a glorified Japanese wrestling magazine. Yeah, but, you know, when Dave calls a match the greatest thing he's ever seen, it's always like, is it, though, or is it just the greatest match you think you've seen? Well, this did get six stars from Uncle Dave and his uh, Star Factory. I don't, t- I, I don't believe it took place in the Tokyo Dome, because if it did, it would have been eight stars. But, yeah. This- Isn't Dave the guy that said that Kenny Omega Okada 2, or Kenny Omega Okada 1, was better than Flair Steamboat? He said their series was better than Flair Steamboat. I'll agree on that. Because I think uh, Flair Steamboat 2, no pun intended, lost a lot of steam. I don't know. I think Flair's – I got to go back and rewatch those. Uh, I know we're plugging another th- series here, but I got to go back and, and, and rewatch those because I, I can watch Flair and Steamboat all day, which if you watch all three of their, like, their trilogy back to back to back, it's going to take you about all day. Yeah. But, which, and like the, I said, the first one was good because it was the first one. It's the first time – it's, you know, a long time coming. It's finally happening, you know, the and this is weird because we're calling Ricky Steamboat the young hot up and comer and Ric Flair the grizzled vet. But that's what it was back then. And then uh, I know, think they were similar age. Yeah, but, you know, Ric Flair had already gone out there and done it and like Ric yeah. Flair was a grizzled young vet at the time. Yeah. Cuz he traveled, he beaten, he had a who's who on his on his list and he'd done all this stuff. And I think Ricky Steamboat had done like some stuff in Hawaii and California and then recently come to the NWA. And he was, yeah, uh, they were, they were big chief. names together in the, um, in the mid South, uh, territory, I believe. But yeah, they, uh, they had a good series, but another good series. This, this is just one of the classic matches. If you go back, ladies and gents, I mean, after we watch this today, I definitely encourage you to search for Kawada versus Misawa on YouTube. There are quite a few of their matches. This the one we've chosen to watch today is their the, the one, you know, called the singles match of the decade by some. It was a six-star match, according to Dave Meltzer. And it's the first six-star match you and I have ever reviewed on this show. So it's history-making in it in it of itself. <laughs> 